All right, everybody, welcome to episode number 30 of Beyond the Court. This is a uh, little Saturday night special edition. I know that's two weeks in a row that, you know, we changed the normal Sunday, but last week we obviously had the Super Bowl. This week, to be quite honest, my buddy right there, Ellie, requested a Saturday night deal. So, Ellie, what's up, bro? I know you wanted a Saturday, so what's going on tomorrow? You got big Valentine's Day plans? Yeah, huge. You know, 20 years married, huge Valentine's Day plans. Going to roll out the red carpet for Jennifer all day. No, uh, yeah, just having a little dinner at my parents' house tomorrow night. Annie Roberts turned 19 here in Stockton and a couple, uh, like a day ago, I think. And so I think we're just end of the week, little dinner, you know, uh, being around each other a little bit. And um, so thank you for the change for tonight and uh, we'll have some fun. Yeah, so tonight, Ellie, we're going to have, and I know, you know, we spoke about this. You don't really know these guys too well. I don't think many of our viewers, uh, hopefully after this, they will know them, uh, know them that well. But it's Sam and Joe Kelly, also known as the Twins. They're from New Jersey. And, uh, you know, let's get right to it, man. They built a racquetball court in their home. What do you think? That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, what else can you say besides that's awesome? It's going to be interesting to hear about the details about that, the financial details. You know, I'll tell you, it's kind of funny that this is the show tonight. And we had a couple of uh, text exchanges with the uh, prominent people in racquetball, including, uh, you know, somebody, uh, somebody, somebody important, you know, somebody that we both know really well and and um, and others. And they talked about these guys. So here they are. They're on. They're coming on. I, ha I actually had a, a, a question from one of our local juniors who is now 18 and He's interested in building a court. I don't know what he means by that, but he was asking that question even before this topic came up, even before the kind of the info uh, that Freddie put out there from Restrung about about the guys in the courts. And so, you know, it's all kind of coming there. I saw a couple of buddies today in Bakersfield, California, that are cleaning up three courts, putting in a lot of work at an elk, like an elk's lodge, which is that's unique. That's a reason to join the elks. You know what I mean? But uh uh, so here we are, you know, good topic and something to uh, something fun to talk to these guys about. And, you know, anytime you have twins on, that's kind of that's interesting, right? Because twins are interesting. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to get to know Joe and Sam Kelly a little better. I can tell you they're fiery. Uh, I've been on the court with them and they're just a bunch of good dudes. But before we get started, you know, as we all know, Ellie, our sport is truly in need of help and assistance, but not just financially. Right. Everybody always has their hands out. And I hate that. You know, I talk to a lot of the people that really help our sport and, and they do a lot. And they say, you know, it's amazing. I, I, I sponsor one event and then all of a sudden I got 10, 15 messages of people that want more, want more, want more. You know, and, and we need the love and the passion and the desire of all of you that are watching this live. Because we know a lot of people watch a show, you know, after the fact. And that's cool. It's like when the DVR came out, you know, we go watch it later. We see the views. Scotty Max sees the analytics. But Ellie... Many people talk a big game. Organizations, associations, they talk a lot, right? What are they doing? They promise this, they promise that. But none of us, not you, not I, nobody watching, we cannot rely on others to keep our sport going, right? And keep it engaged and keep people interested and keep people talking about it. You know, at this point, it's on you. It's on myself. It's on all of us. Enough talk and promises. We need more people that do. What are you doing? What are you doing right now? Person, you know, what are you going to do tomorrow to help racquetball, to keep us going, to keep us out there, to keep it engaged? Scotty Mack, Ellie, myself, you know, we're constantly doing things like this, but there's a lot of things we're doing also behind the scenes that we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that racquetball goes strong for you. It goes better. It, it's not only survives, but thrives and keeps going. And uh, tonight's guests, they're doing that also. And you're going to meet them. And you've probably never heard of them, but they're great dudes. And uh, they're doing. They're not just talking. So we'll meet them right after a quick message from Scotty Mack. We'll be right back.
All right, everybody, we're back. So if you didn't know, this is, again, episode 30 of Beyond the Court. And Ellie and I felt that this was super important to have Sam and Joe Kelly, the twins. Sam and Joe, cheers. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. How's it going tonight, guys? Good. Can, can you hear us all right? <laughs> yeah, it's going good. It's, all yeah, right. It's going good. All right, stand by. Hold it right there. We're going to show everybody a quick video, and then we're going to come back to you. But Sam and Joe, just so you know, while we watch this video, we can hear you. So can you talk us through it? Sure. Right now, I'm looking at Sudsy. He looks great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you guys see the video or not? Maybe we can't see it. Yeah, well, okay, so I've, I've watched it already, and, and you know, you enter through a, a, a snowy scene, right? Uh, it looks like a movie scene almost, and then you like the into, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Kind of a little bit like that, and then you go yes. into uh, kind of a looks like a, a workshop area, uh, and then all of a sudden it opens up to this beautiful glass court uh, with yeah. the second door. The second door looking much better than the first door, by the way. Yes. And, you know, and then you walk in and now you see the court and we're looking at the court, uh, you know, pristine flooring with the wood uh, going up to this, going up to the service box has your has your logo or your names there, essentially. And then we're going to pan up and see the Cliff Swain logo here. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this over the last couple of days. Restrung bringing attention to you guys with Freddie's with Freddie's material. Now, here we are all watching it here on the show once again. And, uh, you know, what a cool what a cool shot from the front wall looking back. Um, as uh, as you guys start walking back into the court, and now now it's came to an end, and here we are. So I just walked everyone through that. There you go. Hey, you nice. know what, Ellie? Ellie, that was spectacular. So Joe and Sam, sorry. Before, hey, before we get going, let let's. I, I got to ask you. Number one, how old are you guys, and how long have you been playing racquetball? We're how old are you? We're thirty. I'm thirty-two. <clears throat> we're both thirty-two, and we have been playing racquetball since we were nineteen years old. All right, so that's 13 years. Ellie, go ahead. I know. Yeah, I mean, question. who's who? Because I know people are wondering, you know, which one's which here on, on the screen. I'm Joe. That is Sam. The court is at Sam's house, and that's where we built it. And oftentimes, <laughs> people say, Sam, you did such a great job on the court. Sam, your court's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, I did a great job, didn't I? <laughs> it was 100% it was two of us. And just to go back to what you said about the opening video, the reason I got that, barn in the shot was I wanted people to see what it looked like it was I mean that property that I purchased that has my house on it looked like something that lived through the, the second world war the tail end of the first second world war and when Joe and I walked into that barn we just looked at each other and we were like this is where we will build our court and we called the back room the sanctuary and then court number four because of the back glass has the four on it but we wanted you to see that barn. I mean, it was just, can I just say too, when, and when people come over and when Freddie came, which was so awesome, we couldn't have been more excited to have him come out. We definitely uh, take people through that, that barn area because we, and I get to say to whoever it is, whoever's walking them in, we always say, this is what it looked like. This was the whole building. It was this high. It was this decrepit because the house, the house itself was abandoned for years before Sam bought it on foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And the machine shop, I believe, was built in the 50s, right? Mm -hmm. By a guy who came over from Germany. Mm -hmm. And it was just his workshop. And um, it was very derelict, as you can see. And so whenever we take people in, they're always skeptical until they get that door, which looks much better. And, and most of them say, wow, especially since it opened on December 11th, we're happy. We thought it was going to be cold in here because the barn's <laughs> really cold. So we're like, no, there's heat. There's heat in the court. There's heat in the sanctuary. You'll be fine. But we want them to have that experience. Yeah, of walking through that door. Like our people, David Austin said, I thought you were going to kill me. When they when you brought me into the barn, <laughs> we thought you were going to kill me. So it's awesome. I mean, New, Jer New Jersey, Ellie, you know, you never know, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you've, to you've told me some stories about Staten Island, a couple of uh, places there, you know, some some older hospital situations there. So, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, 
in the in the you know in the woods there of of the Upper East Coast, like you guys are in. Um, so yeah. exactly where where do you live, and you know where is the court? That you know, are we out in the middle of nowhere, or do we have a city? You know, this- it depends on your definition of the middle of nowhere. To us, it's not. It's the tri-state area right by the Poconos. So okay. it's uh, in uh, Montague, New Jersey. It's an hour and a half from New York if you leave before you know before or after rush hour, and it's about three hours from Philly. <laughs> No, two, like two hours, two and a half hours from Philly. If you were to put your finger on the map exactly where Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey touch, that is literally where we are. Okay. Literally, exactly right there. Yeah, and Ellie, live- Ellie, just to give, just to give you, Ellie, because Ellie's been to Staten Island, guys. He's been to my house. Okay. He, that That is literally 90 minutes away from the homes that you've been on on Staten Island in my home. And yep. it's, it, it's exactly where they're saying... Um, you know, and, and got, where, so yeah, where do you guys live? So Sam, obviously I know you live there. Joe, where are you at? I live on the opposing side of the river in Pennsylvania in a town called Milford. So how far of a drive for you here to get to the court? 6.2 miles, 13 nice. minutes. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? It, right. beats my, it beats my old drive to the club, which was 27 minutes <laughs> if I sped and 31 minutes if I didn't. Which you always were speeding because I, I've yes. come to know that in New York, in New Jersey, that speeding is part of it unless you just can't go more than about two miles an hour. Then I it's- just want to say, John, I'm from Pennsylvania, so easy with the Jersey <laughs> stuff. Got it. Yeah, and that matters a lot, too. I understand. I hear you on that one. <laughs> I understand. So, you know, let's get this out of the way. Why court four? Because that's the first thing. When I saw the number four, I'm like, what the hell? What's what's four? So Sam and I know every single place within a at least 80 mile different 80 mile area to play racquetball where from where we are. Um, we like to play in the most derelict of clubs, the most run down areas. Um, and there was a club in Scranton, Pennsylvania that that's 50 minutes west of me in Pennsylvania that was um uh open during COVID because they were privately owned so we went up there in July right when we had started the court process and they had just switched owners and I walked in and I said Sam they got rid of one of the courts with the glass wall we have to talk to them let's figure it out so that's where we got the wall and Mm. because it was their court four with the sticker on it we were not going to get rid of that. There's also a sticker directly above the door handle that says, please wear Etalon safety goggles. We kept that on there too. Um, the glass wall was manufactured, correct me if I'm wrong, 1983, 84, 84. And um, Cheryl- He corrected you. Yeah, Cheryl Goodina, <laughs> she, she messaged me on Instagram. And I actually said to her, I was like, hey, they had a WPRT. Was it WPRT before the LPRT? Right. Yeah, one, of, one of those, something like that sounds about right. So I messaged her and I was like, Hey, did you ever know this club? And she said, Oh, I remember that you walked in the courts are right there. So she had played on those courts, which was cool. So, so cool. that's why it's court four <clears throat> and the Italon sticker and the court four will all always stay there because we like, we traveled to play at places because we missed out on the best era of racquetball. And so LA Fitnesses are great. Obviously, they're wonderful. They put up courts. But anytime we get a chance to go into a club with some history, we go there. We have talked about going to places that are shut down, getting in, getting power, and playing matches just to try to be a part of what we missed because we missed it. And uh, that's why we have that home club desire to play in places like that. All right. So, guys, you know, we, we talk offline. And I just we, we got a question here. Um, Scott, can you bring in our special guest that's waiting in the waiting room? Because Todd Boss wants to know, what does someone like Cliff Swain think of the court? You know, he's been there. It has uh, Cliff's name on the front of the court. So is our guest there? Is he is he in? Oh, <laughs> oh, there. Who's that? Can, 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 <laughs> it's the third twin. Katie, it's it's the it's the triplet. It's so, the triplet. <laughs> hi, I'm, hi, Clavin. So, hi, Sunday. Hey, Cliff. So we have a question right out of the gate for from Todd Boss. You know, okay. W- what do you think of the court? What's it like? Absolutely amazing. It's it's a a toss up between absolutely amazing, and I'm not surprised at all. Before Sam bought the house, saw the house, 
a year beforehand, maybe he said, my next house will have a racquetball court. And, you know, that entails a lot, right? You know, finding it, I mean, it entails a lot, need, needless to say, right? And then, and as expected, but still it's a wow to me, uh, he found the house, Sam and Joe built the court. And, and the other amazing thing, that, I don't know, they probably didn't even tell you this part, not the court went up so fast at the same time. I'm sure that you know, like when they bought the house, a big part of it, <laughs> the only part maybe was the racquetball court, but the house was, I don't know, Sam, you could say what kind of condition it was, but it needed a lot of attention. So in the four months that it took for Sam and Joe to build this court, they also had to fix the roof, build the kitchen, make it livable. So right. it's not just that they did it in four months and it is the straightest court I've ever hit on in my life. What I mean by that is like when I hit it down the line, it stays down the line. Either it makes me better or I'm hitting it exactly where I mean it, maybe. I'm not sure. It's probably you. <laughs> Thank you, John. I was, <laughs> I was, I was fishing for a compliment there. Yeah. Thanks for picking up on that. <laughs> I'm, thinking it, I'm thinking it's you, Clay. So wait, guys. So Sam, Joe, this one's directly for you. You know, touch on what Cliff said, which is how long did it take you? Um, you know, we talked offline about how much it saved you. This is the number one question I've gotten texts all day. How, how much was it? How much was it? So why don't you guys together walk us through the process? I know about, you know, there's labor costs and there's actual, you know, tell us about everything. Go ahead. Hi, Aislinn. So, okay, so there's a couple different ways to do it. And Joe and I are pretty much, when it comes to basically everything, we do everything ourselves, except for things that can kill you. We don't know how to do electricity. <laughs> so we always will hire an electrician. So just things like that. But in terms of, you know, we were like, oh, we need to pour a new foundation. We did that because that's not rocket science. You know, five minutes on YouTube and you can literally do any of these labor tasks. And then a racquetball court is nothing larger than a, it's an enlarged shoe box. So if you can build one out of popsicle sticks, I got news for you. If you're in any way, shape or form handy with a nail gun and a circular saw, you can do it. Go ahead, Ed, you want to say something? I was gonna say when it comes to the process, the structure that we were working with, like you saw in the video was this long and we needed this much of it for the court. So we literally tore down that much of it. And that started from the roof. We tore off the roof, we tore off the walls, we had the concrete floor. Um, unfortunately, the building was only 19 feet, six inches wide, 19 feet, two inches wide. I think a lot of people, if they had come to that situation like we did, they would have built it and just, just work with the fact that it was a little bit too skinny. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, didn't want to do that. So we had to tear down the wall, pour a new mm -hmm. foundation. And then from there, it was just going up. And so yeah. and the total cost, uh, currently, the racquetball court's 100% done. The sanctuary is 100% done. That's the bar area with the seating, also heated. HVAC, everything. Hey, Liam, we're at $35,000. I don't want to be mad. So that's 100% from the ground up foundation, a little bit of block, uh, the roof, How, everything, 35 grand. But you, but okay, so, so everybody watching and listening, because I know this is a huge, huge part of it. So you guys are out of pocket for 35K, but we talked about this, Sam, you know, privately. How much do you think you saved in the labor that you guys put into it? Yeah. At least a hundred thousand no. dollars. I mean, no, I would, I would be hesitant to say. Not seeing the job with the other. One hundred twenty. I mean, with yeah. COVID, yeah, with COVID, one hundred twenty, one hundred fifty. No, I mean, I when I lived in my no, old house, no, that's there. I had general contractors come. No, I was like, listen, I want, I want to build a racquetball court here. Give me an estimate, and they wouldn't even give me an estimate. They're like, if we give you the numbers, you're not going to do it. I, you, you don't know me. Just give me the numbers and none of them even would because it's a huge undertaking it's a house it's just an empty house or you know a four-car garage with with lifts in it it's big so at least six figures we saved doing it ourselves and when i say i mean we did everything ourselves it was it was just joe and i going over there hey let's put in 10 hours and, and get this thing done so we can play racquetball and so so remind me again here how long did it take you to build the courts the we court started 
either June 25th or June 27th. Now, and we were still working our secular jobs in June. So we were working basically weekends in June till September. And September is when we stopped working secularly. Um, and then we have the winters off. We have seasonal work. Um, so from September forward, we worked full time on the racquetball court, just the two of us, primarily. I'd say 99%, just the two of us, very dangerously. <laughs> and uh, we finished December 11th was the, was the final nail in the coffin. Um, the sanctuary didn't get done until a few weeks later, maybe a month and a half later, because, well, the court was done. Yeah. And we knew it was going to come down to it. We knew we would finish the court and we would take our time with the, you know, the hangout area, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, but December 11th was, was it, so it was a tick under six months, not quite four, but a tick under six. And uh, <clears throat> we knew, we, we knew that it was going to be somewhere in that time. And um, it was a lot of work on the body. And I'm still feeling it a little bit, to be honest. Yeah, we couldn't even, we couldn't even play when we finished it. We, we finished the court. I think we hugged in the service box. There was a fist hug. bump. Fist <laughs> bump. We were like, and we were like, we've done it. And now neither of us can even play. We had to wait at least seven days to play. Yeah. We I were. Let, let, you know, I, I know we have friends that are twins, but Clavin, I want to bring Cliffy back in. For any of you, you that don't know, you should already know, I call Cliff Clavin. Ellie, what do you call Cliff? Clint, Cliff, Clint, Clifford. Cl yeah, you, I call him Clifford too. <laughs> yeah, mo most, of, most of you guys know Cliff Swain as Cliff. You know, we all have special nicknames. I call him Clavin. Ellie's got Clint. You know, Holly Scott commented Clifford, the twins. So, Claves, I want you, you know, tell everybody that's watching a little bit about your relationship with the guys because I got messages right away saying, hey, is that Cliff's house in, in Boston? And I'm like, mm, it might be his house, but it's not his house. So tell us, tell us about your relationship with the guys and, and how, you know, what goes on there. It's hard. It's it's hard to describe. Uh, I don't know. They're nearly <laughs> half my age, um, but I learn a lot from them. That's one super cool thing, in a, in a lot of ways. Um, like I offered to trade one of my number one year end ranking things for their ability to build stuff, and I think Sam said uh, bluntly, like usual, <laughs> "You're retarded" or something. <laughs> something really insulting <laughs> and and um i'm not as insulting right away but i'm thinking like i mean hitting a serve is just not that big a deal so if you want to swap it out i'll swap it out um yeah so it's every single day it's uh super fun uh um well i can go anywhere to play racquetball or not play racquetball but i'm choosing to go there monday because i like hanging out with them and that our uh Wives are going to hit it off and being in the sanctuary, like it's such a great name for it because, you know, as soon as I got there, it, it was great. And I was in awe of the whole place. But next thing you know, I felt like at home in the sanctuary, it's just like completely relaxed. And um, I don't know, I can't wait to go again. And these guys are expert snowboarders. There, there isn't, I think everything they do, they're experts at, <laughs> right. but Good idea. they're, um, they're yeah. going to teach. They, yeah. They'll deny it, but, uh, my kids are really, really been wanting to snowboard and ski, so um, we're going to go snowboarding on uh, Tuesday, and I don't know, I'm hoping to sit in the lodge and watch them, <laughs> but my kids are going to get the uh, the best Clips, advice going. I, I, I say you relax, let Liam and Eastland hang with the guys, and you know, you and Trace just chill out, so, but hey, so Joe and Sam, I'm going to ask you this, Claves, I'm, you could stay all night, I don't care, but I don't want to bore you. But Joe, uh, Sam, we're getting a lot of these questions. How do you handle uh, like the humidity, like the humidity control? Oh, I humidity? love this please, question. Please, can I, can I, no, I, <laughs> can, I can I just start it? Go ahead. Go okay, on. so. Um, Good Sam question. And I, Sam, absolutely. So you have one court, right? And sometimes you're going to have 16 right. hours of playing in one day on it, right? And we would call people because Sam and I are not above calling anyone. We called is dozens too dozen we call dozens dozens 30 i mean we we, call we called everybody. so many hvac people and explained to them exactly what we wanted what we were building what we didn't want mm -hmm. we would say listen we we're building a 20 by 40 foot room it cannot under any circumstances get wet that is 
the only thing that can stop us from that, the power going out, that's it. Those are the only things that can stop us from having fun, from using it as a racquetball court. Because I think I can speak for anyone who plays racquetball, a uh, wet racquetball court is a useless racquetball court. Sam, go ahead. What do you, what do you got? So this is, so we had several well-meaning people tell us, don't do it. Exterior walls get wet. Your front wall is exterior. Your side walls are both exterior. And Joe and I refuse to take that because it's just, that's ridiculous. Seems so insane. the reason racquetball courts get wet today, and I'm happy to say that at this point, we are an authority on this. They get wet because the HVAC, you know, the heating and air conditioning is done on the cheap and it's antiquated. We have top of the top of the line, state of the art HVAC in that court. We have ductless mini splits. And the reason our court will never, ever get wet, and it does see lots of play, even when it's 40 degrees outside and three inches of rain are in the forecast, it doesn't get wet because we have a thousand horsepower of heating and HVAC in there. We bought double what the company recommended in every respect, just to make sure that our court could never get wet. And then our third insurance policy, we have fans. You flip the third switch in and we got air cranking down both walls. It's not necessary. They swore we would never need it, but Joe and I being just over the top had to put it in there. And actually some local guys that play there, they did that for us. So that was a nice gesture, but the court cannot get wet. If you have the proper amount of heating and air conditioning running at the appropriate times, which with the ductless mini split system, as many people know is continuous. My court never gets below 65 degrees. Sorry. I just, want, I just want to say two things sure. just to add to that. Um, Number one, not only do we prevent moisture from the from the inside, but also the outside. I, I went to Atlanta and I played in the in the whatever tournament that was last month. And um, I noticed two weeks ago. It was like two, three weeks ago. Come on. <laughs> it was, right? Um, it was actually a month ago. So one thing I noticed, because now I look at every single court. <laughs> just like and I think you and I actually spoke about it a little bit, Sazi. I look at every court very I put it under my scope and I, I wonder what the problems come from. And um what we did that places don't do, um, we stop moisture from coming from the outside in. Like some people had said, like my brother mentioned, um, you gotta worry about moisture coming from the outside in. You have all these exterior walls. I said, okay, so we put up moisture barrier after moisture barrier after moisture barrier. We live in the overkill. So with the fans, with the moisture barriers, we put flood proofing on the side, on the concrete wall that was up from the initial structure. There's literal flood, there's OSHA grade flood proofing in there. Mm. And um, so no moisture can come in. So anything that's climate controlled is done off from the air conditioning, the HVAC. And just one other thing, what Sam said with the LA fitnesses, which get wet, which are new, 10, 15 years old, maybe at most, they, we built, our racquetball court in 2020 and we use technology from 2020 for HVAC. So we're not using 15 year old technology with a vent pumping in air on six courts in the back of the court, trying to dry the whole court. We're using air that is circulatory. So the court cannot get wet. No, it can't. But, 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 but I know, I mean, I'm literally getting checks from friends right now and, and you're out of pocket for 35, thousand right because yep. at the end of the day i mean who cares about money claves it's just money but we don't you know we don't it's, we do not I, it's, I'd you know, have seriously seriously you know you're out of pocket thirty five thousand. you <sighs> you you admit that the labor that you guys did is probably well over a hundred thousand you mm. know with were, were there any other donations or like you said somebody did the fans the extra fans you know, people that are watching, they want to know, guys, like there's a lot of people around the country that say, I want a court, like speak to them directly. Could they do this? How much could they do it for? What's the difference if they're not handy? What if they, what if they don't know what a screw gun is? You know, are these things they can do? The answer is during COVID, we were paying triple for everything. So a standard sheet of plywood, which we needed 125 of for everything we did, a standard sheet of plywood typically costs about 10 bucks at Lowe's. We needed, we needed all that, but instead of 10 bucks, it was 30 because of COVID. So the price would have been driven down even further if we had done this before COVID, just so everybody knows like, oh, 35 grand, that seems like a lot. No, 
the price would have gone way down. What, were you gonna say something? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I was gonna say, there is no reason not to build a racquetball court. If you don't know what you're doing, chances are your friend does. Chances are you know someone who's a carpenter. I was texting Jake Brennan back a lot because he had some information for me. I know that's something he did professionally. Sam and I are not carpenters by trade, although we have built things. Um, mm -hmm. There is, I can't think of a single reason. I know that everyone talks about it. And if a financial hindrance should be the only thing that could ever stop anyone, anyone from wanting from to build a court. And we, to be honest, when we started the idea, we had conveyed it to a lot of our friends, a lot of them. Um, we'd even started an Instagram page to keep track of our product, uh, of our project, but a lot of people didn't believe it. It's, it's one of those things where everyone says they, they always want to do it. So we didn't get a lot of help from too many people um, initially. And um, I think now the court is done. We have so many people playing at our court. I mean, we have my dad, all of his friends, our club shut down and we opened up to everybody. We, we accept donations in a box to try and cover the HVAC costs. Um, I even had people from uh, different places when I was in Vegas, Jim Douglas, one of them came up to me and handed me money and he said, this is for your court. So we did have some, some people come together. We had a GoFundMe to try and pay for just the HVAC. We raised 5K? It was 5K, yeah. We, so we got $5,000 in donations, which goes into the 35 that we can, you know, the, the ballpark figure. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, and I've had so many people message me, uh, there are clubs that shut down, try to get the glass back walls. We, and if you want to, Sudsy, do you want to ask us anything about the glass back wall? What we I, for I, just, I just wanted to say real quick, people like you might enter into a project like this thinking, where will I go? Where will I go? We got every single thing at our racquetball court from Lowe's and Home Depot, everything. You, the walls are melamine. They're $28 a sheet, $28. You do not need to go to a court company to build a racquetball court because racquetball is, you know, not doing super great. Clubs closed, glass is available. A glass wall, typically we got estimates from 15 to $20,000 and we were gonna pay it. And then Joe and I were like, wait a minute, we go into this club, there's no glass. We paid $3,000 for that wall. And then because our brilliant friend Tyler is just has this amazing mind for engineering, he came over and in two days we had that wall concreted and uh, or we had the glass in concrete and up and it's perfect. I mean, so there's a million ways to do it. It's it can seem intimidating, but in the age of YouTube and information, none of it is beyond the scope of anybody's set of skills. Joe and I, we've built skateboarding ramps. We have never built a home. We've never had to make a wall plumb or square, but it it's just not rocket science. It only seems intimidating until you do it. I think Ellie, I think this Ellie, this is incredible, and I know you have quite. This is like everybody listening. You know, like, and everybody that's going to watch us, let's go build the court. But Ellie, go ahead, I know you have. Yeah, that's what I was, I mean, you know, I think you guys are selling yourself short just a little bit here. I mean, the, you we're guys not, have. We're not, we're well, not. Okay, fair enough. And and <laughs> I should know how to do a lot more with tools and, and all that stuff. But there's so many people out there who just are illiterate when it comes to that and just always have to hire in. So it's really admirable what you guys did and on that front. I want to say that up front right. because, you know, it, it's you know, you guys are positive. You know, I, I hear that. If anyone can do this. You can do this. It can be done. Money's the only thing that should keep you from doing this. But, you know, that's that's saying a lot, you know, and you guys, uh, I like that positive stance on it, but you guys have the skill set. So, uh, you know, that's just awesome. But, you know, you mentioned something early on about the dangers of it. You said some, you know, the danger of it. Now, so talk about, you know, I assume it's those top panelings up at the highest parts of the, of the walls that are probably the most dangerous, but you guys have lifts, you're renting lifts and all that stuff. Well, so I, let, let, let me, let me give a different perspective That's on the danger, guys. Ellie's, a, Ellie's an only child. So as siblings, Ellie, sometimes the danger could just be like fighting and getting into, you know, it gets uncomfortable <laughs> sometimes. So on the top be, part, you know, could be that danger part, too, you know, 10, 20, 15 feet up. Right. So, so what, okay. Um, the danger started, longer before much before that the demolition um, was the really demolition was extremely dangerous um sam and i are definitely the sort of people who are like let's knock it over clean it up later um so re regardless of that we'll talk about the danger from constructing the court 
we were buying 18 foot long two by eights to code. Mm -hmm. They weighed about probably only 40 or 50 pounds of board. I was literally, and we didn't have lifts. We had scaffolding. We had one thing of scaffolding, which is just a 15 foot tall or 16 platform. foot tall platform. On wheels. I would literally shove Sam around on it. He would shout, tuck and roll. And I would right. grab it and he yeah. would push me around. And then I would get him to where he needed to be. Right. And I would slide him up a 40 pound board, get it into place and we'd set the sill. And then we'd just go all the way down. Um, when it came to the panels, those panels weigh 97 pounds. We'll round it off to 100 because it's easier to say. And no lift, same thing. We were literally shoving, sliding them up a ladder, two ladders, very dangerously. Um, we wouldn't <laughs> let anyone watch us do this. That's just how we work. We were probably fighting while we were doing it. I don't know any, I, we, we couldn't figure out a better way to do it. Yeah, we couldn't. The ladders, at least on an angle, you could lay it down and slide it up. It kind of like, you know, just push it up and then get it in the spot. But I mean, to get a scissor lift in there and all that stuff, like, well, what, but, but, but did you not do the scissor lift? Cause I know a little bit about construction. So did you guys not go at lifts because of the cost? Is that? No, we, uh, right. I think we didn't, we didn't do the scissor lift because of the way we had to build the court in our minds, the glass wall had to be the pit. It, it, we had a punch list. Um, the scissor list, the, ugh, the scissor lift couldn't fit through the glass wall. And we had a buddy, like we said, our buddy Tyler, who was the mastermind. We we were just guinea pigs for the glass wall. We were gonna get it done, but dangerously and probably break a panel. They yeah. weigh, the the panes of glass weigh four hundred pounds a piece. Mm. Yeah, four zero zero a piece. So our friend said, "I can do it here," and we're like, "All right, show up. We'll do it then." So the scissor lift was out because of a the floor. And B, just the way that he was able to work, we had to work around him since he was doing the glass wall. Um, so <clears throat> getting the panels up, not only that, but we had to leave just a credit card's worth of room in between each panel for expansion and contraction of the panel. Mm -hmm. So not only did we have to get it 20 feet off the ground for the ceiling, but we had to have just a tiny bit of space so the sheets could expand and contract. Um, it was very dangerous. It was very hard, but if we had if we had a little bit more help, it probably would have been easier. Help um, would have made help would have made it safer. Help would, we didn't let our we next didn't, time we fly the Viking in, Jake Bredenbeck. He can he's, <laughs> he's like he's like two on. Hey, Claves, are you there, Cliffy? Claven? I, I I don't know where Claven went. Uh, if we if we can get him back, I do. Claves? I, all right, I just want to say, Subti, I just want to say, John, uh, Scott, whoever, really, Joe and I, when it comes to, like, the cost of these things, like, we're an open book. Like, any questions about the cost, we're happy to answer because for a long time, that was the prohibitive. Well, it wasn't really because we would have done it no matter what. But a lot of people think it's prohibitive. The HVAC, $7,000, soup to nuts. So, like, any questions that you're getting that people want to know about cost, Please ask because, you know, there, there's nothing in the punch list that's re other than the back glass. I mean, we were going to piece together our own back glass. We were on Facebook Marketplace uh, buying two-inch bulletproof glass from Bodegas in Harlem. Like, we did it. We were buying it. We were going to make our own glass wall. And then we were like, wait a minute. If we nag this guy at Racketeers long enough, he will sell it to us. And, and we, we did. We and nagged him for weeks until he responded. Go ahead, Suzzy. Yeah, sorry. I, so I just want to... In the spirit of transparency, I just want to say that. Like, we will talk about no, anything. I, I, I love that. I know we spoke earlier, and for everybody watching, you know, Sam told me, he said, there's nothing you can ask me. But Claves, Claves, can you hear me? Okay. You're, can't hear yes, you. I, yes, I can hear you. All right. So before we let you go, you yep. know, you're, you're the expert, and you're, you are the greatest player ever, and one of the greatest players ever to play on this court. So truly, you know, everybody's listening, Claves, and they're like, these two guys built this court by themselves. We know you're their friend, but like, no bullshit. How's the court? I'm telling you, it's the most, I already told you, it's the most perfect court I've played on. The way it plays, it's fast. It's, it's perfect. It's impressive. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on here even talking about this. I don't know. I'm just 
I'm I mean, in awe of the whole thing. I really your am. Back, your backdrop there looks awesome. Obviously, your green screen. You like that? Cool ass <laughs> backdrop there of the court. I mean, it looks great. It really does look, you know, well well lighted and, and all that. Talk about the guys' games a little bit, Clifford. Since uh, oh you know, boy, don't do that. You know, so I know there's some. I know there's some work being put in on their games. I I was watching some YouTube video of the guys today playing some dubs and oh, a lot of me- I see a lot of mechanics that remind me of Cliff Swain teachings and and uh, I see the guys just relentlessly diving across the floor for the ball so um you know i know they got some game i've seen that so talk about it well i could say i could say this some of the if some of the pros if some pros in the past would listen and and do what they do if they listen if they would listen the way sam and joe and then take the advice that they're seeking and then implement it there would have been a lot of pros that won a lot more matches and these guys right here um i don't know how long i, I just can't even keep track i don't know how long it's been since we started hanging out and working together a little bit, but they, they will beat some pros in some matches at least. And it's because they're at, it's not, I mean, there's a lot of amazing athletes out there that never do anything. These guys are great athletes. They're extremely competitive. I mean, they, they, they fight with each other on the court and they fight with each other when they're building it. And then they're, then they're best friends too. So um, yeah, their games have, it's absolutely amazing what's happened. What level were you guys when would you even call yourselves when we started? Novice. Novice. <laughs> I would call myself, I would call myself the most insecure beginners. Like, I was like, I had a badminton backhand. Is that a thing? Like <laughs> It was, hey, it was, yeah. Yeah, Ellie, I've been on the court with both of these guys, and I could tell you there's a lot of Cliff Swain in both of them because, yep. you know, we're practicing and training, and I'm like, these guys actually think they're going to beat me right now. And, and <laughs> you know, that, that's like, that's a, that's annoying. And, and actually, okay. I think, we're, we're I think you guys did kick my ass, didn't you? I don't, I don't remember, but, you know, yeah, they, they're, they're scrappy. They love to go at it. You know, it's, they're, they're amazing. But, hey, guys, just so you know, don't ever change your coach because that guy right there, I still call him for questions. Trust me. So, so he's, so he's still giving me one. answers. Like last weekend, I, we were playing we we're playing doubles. I, I think it was Joe on the left. And I'm like, you know, wanting to hit the reverse. And he's in the way, of course, on purpose. <laughs> and, you know, not typically I held up. And, you know, I didn't ask for an avoidable or anything. I just went to go serve again. And they're yelling at me. For not <laughs> blasting him with the ball, like hit me with the ball. Then, like, well, I don't want to hit you with the ball. Well, what hit Should me have. with the ball? I'm not, I'm not giving you the reverse. He said, "Was that you, Joe?" Yeah. yeah. And I, mean, I said, "You okay, don't well, have don't to give the reverse, reverse, right?" But I'm not, no. I'm not blasting you right now. I mean, I say said, it again, and maybe I will, but I'm not. Yeah, but said, you know what? You, you guys <laughs> are, you guys aren't in our realm, Ellie and I, until you give him the whole court, but he actually <laughs> finds like your you. neck. <laughs> you know, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's quite impressive so hey scotty mac you have some pictures queued up right let's let's take a look at these pictures of the guys oh, building cool. this court yeah check this out we're gonna everybody i mean i'm getting texts from people all over the world literally right now saying do you have pictures do you have video so scotty mac do you have those pictures i see one right now the floor that can we see cool. them is there any way that we can see them too? I just want to see what people are looking at. Yeah, you're probably you, you, you need, need to go to gallery view. view. Yeah, go to gallery go view. Go to gallery view. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm working yeah. on it. Are you on your computer or your phone, Sam? Joe? No, uh, iPad. Click on the Okay, yeah. So just swipe the screen right or left. Uh I got I got it. It in it. In it. Uh, All I know it. is oh, these okay. guys, these guys can build a racquetball court. But they have no idea how to use an iPhone or iPad. That's impressive. true. Oh, accurate. You, oh, I want to see that. I got it. Good. Okay. Okay. You got so it? Okay. Good. Talk, talk us through that. Go. Yep. Yep. Hey, go, guys. Go, go. Hold on. Hold on one second. So, okay. um, I'm going to start packing to go visit these animals. I'm I'm willingly taking <laughs> this this girl and my family to go hang out with them and get insulted and you know blast the racquetball. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check out and thanks for having me, guys. Aislinn, Aislinn, buy Aislinn. Aislinn, I told Daddy to buy you a horse, okay? <laughs> Later, guys. See you soon. Bye. Say, say, say bye to everyone. Bye. Oh, bye, Aislinn. Thanks, Cliff. See you later. All right, see you guys. All right. See ya. Okay, so... Um, okay, talk this us was, through these pictures. Okay, so if you're looking at this wall that is immediately in front of you in the picture, 
first of all, you're looking into the court. Where I'm standing is probably a little bit left um, just outside the glass back wall. Um, those were, we think, grow rooms, to be honest. Okay, and that's when we tore down the grow rooms. Um, but what I want you to notice in this picture is up top, those boards um, running from left to right, that's our floor that we brought down. Yep. Okay. So those are seven inch um, Douglas fir boards that are probably 200 years old that we brought down. They're, they're gorgeous in a house and they're gorgeous in the court. And so that's the flooring for the court. That's awesome right there. I mean, yeah, that's we incredible. wanted to recycle that. I mean, I'm watching a lot of shows on, you know, a lot of shows with my wife on TV about, you know, real estate and all the, the, uh, the renovations and whatnot. So I'm, you know, just daydreaming about what, what I wish I could do. And you're talking about something that's so cool right there. So that's man, incredible. and this was leading to my next question was, you know, did you document this? I'm seeing photos right now, but do we have video document documentation of the process that you guys went through? Or do you guys have to do this again and video the whole damn thing so that it can be really put out there for the racquetball world and the world in general? You know, we every time we set off on something like this, because we also, I mean, we built some pretty, uh, pretty big skateboard ramps in the woods because we really are a big part of that as well like giant ramps. We always say really? we're going to document it, but the reality is, is it wastes time. It wastes time and we're just trying <laughs> to get it done. So people will come up, photographers will throw on, well, yeah, can we come up and shoot for a day and get you guys? We're like, uh, if you want, but don't ask us to do anything because we just want to, we just kind of get in that zone and we just go, you know? Right. That's the glass back wall at the club. Um, they had dragged it out of the, out of the court area and they put it in this back um, room of the club and that's where we picked it up from that's that's our actual wall right there and that's a seven that that right there is a seventeen thousand dollar wall that comes on that's uninstalled that's what they cost like 17 the, grand yeah 17 grand and we got it for three thousand which mm -hmm. means they're available for less than five grand because they're everywhere if it's your just, club shutting down go out find them you know the courts that are getting shut down when a club loses a court and it has a glass back wall chances are they're going to close it in, turn it into a Zumba golf simulator, go get the glass. I know personally that Laurel, Maryland just closed and they had what, six glass back walls? Yep, at least five. And there's no reason not to buy it too because from a structural standpoint, it's non-load bearing. So there's nothing illegal or wrong. It's just a matter of getting the glass and then you have it. And it was mandatory for our court. We, we weren't going to build one without it. Yep. And that's the, uh, that's the that actual alley. floor. That's when, you know, that was four days into it. We'd gotten the roof off. We were able to reuse some of those rafters there on the roof. And that's the floor. We were peeling it up piece by piece. And it actually took us a couple of days. We were like, dude, why don't we just reuse this? And that's, yeah. that's where we got the idea from. That was all Joe because he, uh, he did some flooring. That's when the half the building was gone. Um, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so that's where the, the physical court had to start going up almost. I don't know if that's the... Oh, yeah, so that's when we were building. So you can actually see, um, if you look back where the buildings connect on the back, what would be the back right corner of the court, you can see how we had to go wider there. Um, right, right. And so that is, yeah, just the start of the new building after we poured the foundation. That is... I contacted, a, I contacted a guy about doing some hand lettered painting for us. He did not send me any samples of the single stroke lettering, which is what I'm trying to do there. So I did it. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it came out very well. It came out. It, looks, it came out. It looks nice. awesome. It looks so, cool. Do you, do you think that that inch difference between what was there and, and uh, the court, right? Was it, was it less than an inch or was it an inch? What would no. you say? No. So the actual exterior, so the building, right? What, so that, what you're looking at right there is right. obviously the finished product, but we can't say it enough. I wish if Joe could pull it up and hold it up that people could see, uh, Amy Ruiz asked Joe, oh, she I said, did you it. guys have some architects draw up some plans for this? Because my township, they wanted to know what I was doing with the building <laughs> and my wife permission to show. Yeah, can you can you see this? Joe, yeah, hold it up, see if they can see it. This is what this is what he, uh he got tap on there. Take, take it take it back a little bit. Yeah, no. oh, Scott, oh. Scotty, Scotty, any ideas yeah. what they could do with that? Wait, hold on, Joe. Just turn, turn down the brightness. No, screen, it's not gonna do it. Save, yeah, yeah, oh, there it is. See it. There oh, it yeah. is. <laughs> architectural drawing. <laughs> so so I promise you, uh our court is exactly 20 feet wide. The entire length, 
which isn't rocket science. And it's also exactly 40 feet long. And the thing that we were shocked by the most is that no court that we know of is actually 20 feet wide. It's like they don't account for things. So right. we counted our court when we made it was 20 feet, one inch and a half wide because the metal means 0.75 inches. So obviously you need two of those and you're at 20 feet. But uh, when we were when we were building it, yeah, eight inches would make a huge difference. And the court, the club where we got the glass from was only 19.6. Okay. And you feel it when you're on the court. We didn't know how narrow it was until we got the glass and measured it and we could see that the silicone was three inches on both sides and we're like tight this is such a gross oversight from a construction right. horrible right. oversight right. so we refused to do that and it did cost probably an additional with the foundation probably 1800 bucks yeah 1800 bucks to make it a true your, 20 guy guys what are your plans for the court what do you want to do with it like give us some things you want to do with that court. yeah go ahead um <clears throat> So our club closed down. There was there was rumor about it closing down b- before COVID. Um, we had three courts there. And we told everyone that we were going to build a court, of course. And um, obviously, because of COVID, we're limited as to what we can do. But we we plan on having invitational events. Um, most definitely, I've talked to people from many countries about it and told them that we will personally put a prize money that they will come play for. Yes. Um, also, you know, we let everybody plan it right now. We have in my, if, if I think about it, and I broke down the math earlier, it, it is hands down the most used court in the country right now. Yeah. It's, it's one court. It's used by at least 40 people a week. Wow. Um, there's a Google calendar where there are guys show up. They play from, they have groups of guys, six guys show up at a time. They only play doubles and they wreak havoc, but they bring their own booze. They leave it there. Um, so the court is open to anyone. We don't ask for a monthly donation. Um, there is a donation box. We like to think that the electricity should pay for itself because we don't require membership fee or anything. Um, right. It's just open for racquetball. Like yeah. we want people to have a place to play racquetball. Our um, father 20, is who, it twenty four seven? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's parking in the back. Our father has a group of guys, and they are just diehard racquetball players. And Joe and I have always been. We have always gone to the club since we started playing on you know Thursday night or Tuesday night to play with our dad. We love it. We they don't have it like here. It very much. They don't like it anymore. Like it. But we still do it. You know, like we have it here. We play with our father and. For us to be able to do that with our dad is extremely special to us. Right, right. We love spending time with him and we love his enthusiasm. And to see his face, you know, when he brings uh, people to the court is amazing for us because our dad has always been a freak supporter of us. I mean, pushing us into the soccer programs. And believe it or not, when we were younger, begging us to play racquetball. Guys, please, our high school had four courts and we mm. did not play. Wow. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to get into that. that, I, don't that want we spoke, I just we, I just have we to spoke say, about that and it's it's disappointing. But yes, um, so four beautiful glass sidewall courts, Sudsy. All of them have glass sidewalls. That's wild. Yeah. That it would be great to see some some video on that, to be honest, because there's not, you know, there's people don't know about things like that. You know, that's first I've heard of something like this and and yeah. uh, you know, be able to see a little video footage of what what it looks like in a high school to have four courts. Yeah, uh, indoor tennis court with four racquetball courts on the side. There's, and I just I just want to say real quick too, because it might be another question. Okay, so you have the court. Well, what does it cost? Uh, New Jersey winters can be pretty brutal. Yep. Um, we've had we haven't had a day above freezing in about a month and a half. The heating has been about 350 bucks a month. And remember, that's 65 degrees. Or when we're playing, we crank it up to 70, but all the time. So oh. that's just another number for people to think <clears throat> about. Like, oh, well, even if I can afford it, what's the heating and air conditioning? A couple of friends throwing some money, and then all of a sudden, boom, 350 bucks a month. Yeah, it's really I, not that bad. I, I, I was thinking it was going to be way more than that, to be honest with you. And that wasn't I'm happy I shared that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, with the that's state a- of the art stuff, it's, it, you know, things are made now to be energy efficient. That's really what it comes down to. If you install it correctly and you have everything that where it needs to be proper, running smoothly, proper insulation, proper I mean, insulation, of course. Yeah. Like when you do things right, they're meant to be left on. Like the, 
that's another problem with with clubs is i know we always used to say turn on the ac like come on it's getting wet but yeah. when you crank on ac out of nowhere the court's going to get way more moisture in it before it gets dry mm -hmm. so these yeah. the, the new systems are meant to be left on and yeah. so that's what we do yeah. Oh, the ductless mini splits. I mean, if you don't know about that, then you know where you're not ready for this, though. So you know that's. I did. I, I was thinking that coming into this whole interview, we, ductless mini splits are going to be a huge topic here in this in this one. So, no, I'm actually, you know, obviously that's great. Just hearing that right there, that phrase, as if everyone's supposed to know that that's what you need to have there. That's what I'm saying. You guys have skill sets that are, you know, not to be taken lightly when you can do this. Now, you mentioned you were building. You know, you had to renovate your house at the same time this was happening uh to be make it livable for yourself again you know so is there possibilities of like you know little cabanas or whatnot on the property here so that people <laughs> can actually come in i mean you know you might have some people coming in from out of country and need to want to stay right by the court so they can play a a, a 1 a.m match and then maybe a, a 2 p.m match the next day and a little hitting in between or whatever there are there are multiple large hotels less than three miles from my house. <laughs> yeah, they can crash in any one of those. Uh, That's the, actually the most, important. That's important yeah. information, really, to be oh, honest. Yeah. Because you know yeah. you're going to get people that are going to be now on you guys about coming in for a visit, checking it out, staying a anybody, night or two nearby. Anybody we, that wants to, man. And we, I just wanted to say too, um, there's a YouTube channel, and it, I we're on it. Uh, a lot it was at our old club um there's a youtube video of our court that jason put up there's actually an older video of our high school courts um in there just a side note i tried to do a racquetball program there for two years and they fought me tooth and nail on it they wouldn't give me any time they were letting cheerleaders paint in the racquetball courts instead of letting me do racquetball after school so it was it, it was sad man yeah. would, you, would, would, would you guys you know there's a lot of people around the country that that want to do this. And I think you're giving them hope and, you know, some inspiration to actually be able to try to pull this off. Would you guys consider helping those people, whether it's it's for a fee, whether it's go ahead. Wouldn't cost anything. Just my phone, like privatizing racquetball is is Joe's Instagram handle. Hit him up. He'll give you his phone number, my phone number. We will talk to anybody about any question they have regarding anything that has to do with racquetball. I mean, we are, Amy Ruiz said, she's like, you guys are obsessed. We are, we're obsessed. We love it. And I, it's not that we try to downplay what we did because we do recognize that it's great and we're thrilled with the results that we got, but people can do it, but people can do it. And you really wouldn't believe it if you saw the final product, but nobody believed it was going to get done when they saw it during construction. They were like, uh, this is looking a little, you know, like it's not Holly's fan. Yeah, well, 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 <laughs> well we have, we have, an, we have another fan hey, and Holly. Holly, Holly had a question about the people that attend. So we wanted to bring Holly Scott in to ask you directly about certain people that are in. And then we're going to wind down. So Holly, what, what was your question about who, who's there playing? I'm just saying, you said prize money. Women like prize money too. <laughs> an oh, we, believe me, Holly, we've, we've talked about it. There's it, COVID is really it. I think we can call COVID an avoidable hinder at this point. It's not just a regular <laughs> hinder, right? Yeah. It's going to happen. There's going to be, a, there's going to be a lot of ball. Do you, do you guys have any plans of having any, you know, like an LPRT event or ha have any of the top level women been there yet? Yeah, we, uh, we trained Maciel Rivera. She was here probably a week after the court was done and she spent, uh, was it just a day? She was there with us all day before she went to Bolivia. And uh, it's cool because actually our court has a lot of natural light. So she commented that it was kind of like playing in Bolivia because when the sun comes in mm -hmm. uh, through, the, through the side door that we have, it really makes the whole court glow. It changes the whole dynamic and it's, it's, it's really nice. So yeah, she's the, been there. The darker we wood, will. the darker stain on the floor too, uh, is a little bit reminiscent of what I seen in, in Bolivia traveling through there too. So that, that part's cool. Sorry about that light there, but, um, well, you know, this, this is great. You know, I'm sure now that Freddie's been out there, there is some kind of talk and pitch about an outdoor court or a one wall at, at, at least. <laughs> 
you know, warm summers there. Any outdoor possibilities on, on the property or does it not lay out for that? I think, uh, I think Richie Miller is taking care of that, quite frankly. Um, he purchased, he's in the middle of, um, I think that, I think where he is, he's probably 45 minutes into New York from us, but okay. the town is fighting him a little bit. He's right. He's in a town called New Windsor, New York. It's by Newburgh, New York. And he's, he actually erected a one wall. I think he's doing a few one walls. Um, a lot of pickleball, unfortunately. If, if we do anything else, which I don't believe we're going to, but if we do do anything else, it will be, we will build a second court. And right. it's because my, our dad, my dad is already like, Sammy, you got to build a second court. We need a second court. It's like, well, Joe and I, here's the fundamental problem. We can only be on one court at a time. That mm -hmm. is fundamental for me. But being the, uh, being who we are, you know, you never know, you never know what will happen. The barn is wide enough to accommodate a second one. And also after, after all the, my dad's friends that started playing there, they, they want us to build them. Well, what if we help pay for it? Or what if we help you build it? And I'm like, well, I don't know if you have skills enough to actually contribute to helping. That's my concern. But um, right. people are, they're at our sides about it for sure. They really want us to do it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, hey, got Guys, you know, Todd, Todd Boss has been commenting on, in the chat, and he said that he ran the numbers, and nobody's better than Todd Boss at running numbers. And he said you can easily have a full pro stop. So with Holly Scott here, if you do another court, you can easily have a men's and women's pro stop. So uh, you, you listen, if you have the court time, we could do it. We can make it happen. But listen, guys, with that, uh, Ellie and I are going to let all three of you go now. Holly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, Holly, good to see you. Tell I didn't really contribute, hey. but I feel famous now. I'm on the like famous Sudzine Ellie podcast. It's crazy. Hey, <laughs> you, you are there. Hey, you know, Holly, we're going to have you for your own show at some point, but you know, well, I don't know, know if I'm that interesting. <laughs> we're we're going to wait till you win your first pro stop, as Cliffy says you're going to do. So we're going to wait for that one. So, Joe and Sam. You know, guys, really, I can't thank you enough personally because, you know, what you're doing is you're actually doing. There's a lot of talk and a lot of people talk a lot, but they really don't do much. And you guys didn't say much. You just did it. And it's super admirable. And this is no bullshit. You know, we can say that because we're a nighttime show and we're rated, I don't know what we are, PG-13 or something. But, you know, <laughs> you guys, you, you know, you love the sport. It's the labor of love. And um, I, I, I want to say thank you, you know, on, on behalf of myself and anybody else that is in the sport, because you're showing people that it could be done. And, uh, you know, you went out and did it. And I appreciate your time. Ellie, you know, anything else you want to say? Yeah, to no, great job, guys. I look forward to uh, seeing it in person someday and playing on the court, playing with you guys. And, uh, and um, you know, just, just, just awesome job on that. And, you know, keep video, keep pumping some video out of there so that we're, watching what's happening on the court you know everyone's going to get to know your games and specifically obviously you're going to have the most court time but then any guests that come through and and uh, look forward to seeing that and keeping up to date with it and having you guys on here and there talking you know even if it's small segments but having you guys on to tell us what's going on from time to time because uh you know it's a one-of-a-kind out there and and look forward to following you guys from here on out awesome yeah thank you guys this was really nice and uh anytime you guys are ever anywhere near new york city please hit us up Holly, that means you too. I'll mm -hmm. be there. <laughs> if anyone has it, twice. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, privatizing racquetball is the Instagram. You can message. Both of us will give you our phone numbers personally. You can ask us any questions we want. We are open books when it comes to the racquetball court, amongst other things. So just don't hesitate. Everyone can build courts. It's not that hard. Yep. I know it seems yeah. like it is, but everyone can do it. Yeah, guys, you know, that that's perfect. But before I let you go and, you know, just tell everybody watching, you know, like give them a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation of why and how they could do it. And then we're getting you out of here. Holly, we're getting you out of here. And Ellie and I are going to close the show. So really, Joe and Sam, you know, what is it? You know, what is it? Tell everybody that wants to do that. If you know, if, if you have a group of friends and you want to talk about it, pull straws, whoever has property, put a straw into a hat, whoever's got property, whoever's not moving. That's what you need. You need a place. Take it from right from there. 
If you don't know how to do concrete, you call a concrete company, you ask people. All you need first is a plot of land, a space to do it. So once you have the space to do it, your project can start. Yeah. Would, would you agree? Yeah, ask questions. Just ask questions. It's not complicated. Ask questions and you, you can easily get all the information you need on YouTube, everything. I've been, uh, I've been, I'm, I'm glad you're saying this because I've been uh, in my dad's ear and he's watching the show right now about getting a piece of farmland not too far from Stockton here. We're right in the farm farming area of, of Northern California and doing this exactly. And now he's got some numbers to hear about it. Probably won't do it, but uh, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe this will, you know, motivate him during these times because we're having, we're having troubles playing here. So you guys have done a lot tonight. This has been a great interview. One of my favorites and didn't see that coming. So thanks guys. Thank you. Awesome, Joe, Everyone. Sam, thank you. Holly, yep. thank you for jumping in. Holly, we will see, see we'll see you guys later. Ellie. Later. <laughs> Ellie, yeah, like you said, I mean, just just amazing. You know, two guys that love our sport just getting shit done, huh? You know, they yeah. built a beautiful racquetball court. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I feel like there's a bunch more questions out there for him too. You know, it's kind of always the way it is uh, with really interesting stories in, in our sport and in these interviews that we've had now at 30 of them. Um, you know, there's a handful of them now, you know, a good dozen or so that are really, really interesting and feels like there's questions that are left on the table for him. And, uh, but yeah, the, yeah, these guys are, these guys are entertaining. I like their sense of humor too. You can feel it. And I like that, uh, you know, they're not going to just be okay guys. And yes, guys, they, you know, they, they jumped on me real quick about saying, you know, it is doable. It is doable. You know, yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know how to do shit with this, with tools, you know, don't know how to build anything. I'm kind of in that ballpark, uh, willing to learn, but really, you know, it takes time to do that. So there's a lot going on there with this and, and, um, I, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of traction this interview gets and, and the feel out there and the word that gets out there. And, um, people that people in groups that support it and, and trying to see who's the next person to build a court and kind of document it and go on a tear of people who build courts. That's interesting. Yeah, right? I, I have. So Scotty Mac, can you show the video um, real quick of another friend of ours, friend of mine who has the, he, he has a court, not just oh, one, he has two. Check this out. And Cyrus Jones, the former Patriot, this is in Midland, Texas. This That's like court. an athletic club. That's court one. This is his home. That's court two. So this is this is in Midland, Texas, and that's the home of Kenneth Poole. Uh, Kenneth is a huge supporter of the sport. Uh, he's he's been a supporter of mine, you know, at some events, and I've been there. Cliff has been there. It's absolutely amazing. That's like the private bar in the middle. So you walk in. So his house is is set back behind this building, and Kenneth has these two courts so you walk into this room and to the left is a glass back wall to the right is a glass back wall and then straight ahead is 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 that bar area but people are doing it you know people love our sport ellie and and they want it and, and when i was down there in midland texas at those courts there was about 20 or 30 of us and we did some we had some good times we played some ball we were just jumping in and out and it was a lot of fun let's talk about that for a sec like where do we know about privately owned courts here in the United States. We all know about the Jack Scott court up in uh, Bend, Oregon. And um, well, we don't all know about that, but a lot of people who go way back with racquetball, you know, a lot of the pros from in the seventies and eighties, know Jack Scott with the Salem event uh, that was there year after year. And they really took care of him. Jack was a great guy. I got to meet Jack with, uh, with Clifford, you know, him and him and I, and our, our, uh, our friends at the time went up and stayed up in Bend, Oregon. Racquetball court right there when you walk in. Didn't even think about playing on it. But at the time, we were on vacation. <laughs> it was right after the Portland Nationals, you know. And, and uh, you know, we were just done for the season for a little bit, taking a break. But it was impressive. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun, right? I oh, mean, yeah, of course, there, Portland was a great time. But there, you know, there's, that, were you ever were you ever at that home court in Vegas? I forgot the guy's name. Where you walk down the stairs, I heard about it. But, sidewall glass. I mean, it was you know. So it's it's happening out there. It's 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 beautiful. Where else? I, where else? Where else do you know about? So I know the Vegas, I, uh, Florida. Scott Hirsch. He had a beautiful back wall glass down in Boca. Really. Um, obviously, Texas. Kenneth Poole's two courts. Uh, Utah, there's a gentleman there. I'm not sure the name. I forget. Obviously, now the twins in Jersey. So they're out there. They're out there. You know, 
they're out there, you know, and it's really cool. And it seems that it's, it's affordable, but you know, is that enough? You know, Ellie, is that really enough? Well, that's what I'm saying. An interview like this and just that, just this getting this concept out there, you know, it's uh, places with wide open space, you know, that's, it's, uh, it's about the land and, and having property and, and uh, being motivated by this type of interview, by this, this situation, by documenting and seeing some others that are out there. I think, you know, posting that little video right there of, of Kenneth Poole's courts is huge. That's, and that's in his house, it's amazing. Right, right in front of he's his got, house, you know, he can run a full pro stop. In his house, he's got two glass back wall courts. There's so many possibilities, especially, well, you know, guys like us, it would be huge for us to have a couple of courts, two, three, two to four courts to, to do seminars, to do, you know, I, camps, to have great time. I want to build and, one here. And I'm, I, I'm just, I'm hesitant course. on like the whole GoFundMe and like all that stuff because, you know, yeah, it costs money. And I, I would love if I could have a court or two here or, or wherever I might be. But, you know, we talk about us being together in Stockton. Imagine what we could do, you know, just like that you know there's we, we, there's just there's a lot of opportunities a lot of possibilities i think about my time going to billings montana every year and having great times and getting to know the people there and obviously a lot of those players that are playing out of billings i mean they got land you know what i mean you don't see your neighbors sometimes in 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 locations that have nice space and uh you know aren't aren't sit you know you know basically cities everywhere so it's it's interesting in our area right here would be an interesting situation because there's so much farmland right around Stockton. It's just uh, there's opportunity and incredible opportunities. And maybe, hey, maybe something will get going because I'll tell you what, you know, one of our in-shape clubs is closed down. The club I grew up at, Quail Lakes Athletic Club, 14 courts originally, down to four. We, play, we I think we played more basketball there than we, we did played a lot of hoops there, bud. You and yeah, I played a lot of hoops. hoops. Maybe hit play more racquetball at times. Yeah, we hit a couple times more at Quail probably, but we played hoops a lot at, at Quail Lakes yeah. and. Uh, and so, you know, unfortunately there were hoop courts because they took out racquetball courts, but you know, that court, that club sitting there with four courts right now, empty for since COVID basically started and doesn't appear to be reopening anytime soon as a racquetball club. So that's a problem. And there's guys here in town that are looking into it and groups of people. So we'll see where that, what happens, but uh, I'm certainly going to ask about the back walls now, the glass back walls. I mean, that seems like, I mean, that would, that was just incredible, right? those seems yeah. like it could be useful for somebody. That's willing yeah, to if they're, they're going to take them down. Yeah, I mean, that's that's another good message for anybody watching. Like, you know, Joe and Sam taught us a lot. You know, Ellie just touched on it. If, if there is a club closing, um, you know, th there is material there that is very useful. And if not for you, maybe somebody else that's interested in building a court or, or, or doing something, whether it's on their own property. But, you know, Ellie, that's a great point. So, you know, with that, we, we are at our time limit our time limit, our new time limit of Beyond the Court. This was uh, episode 30, but before I go, Ellie, this is a little bit new. I personally just want to say thank you to you, obviously, for all this. Um, Scotty Mack behind the scenes, uh, getting this done, being an incredible producer. My wife, Veronica, you know, you do so much. A lot of these graphics you see, a lot of these, uh, the posts and the flyers, thank you. And uh, Keith Miner, KWM Gutterman. You know, you, you've been, you're awesome. We love you. And, uh, you know, we hope Ellie and I and Scotty Mack would love to see some more people support and sponsor our show. If you do, great. If you don't, we're still going to try to keep going. And uh, other than that, this was episode 30. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So make sure whoever you love, you love them a lot. But you shouldn't just love them on Valentine's Day. Love them every day. You know, Valentine's Day is just a day for Hallmark, right? Buy them a card, buy them a gift. Ellie, I know you're going to have a good Valentine's Day, buddy. Scotty Mack, I know you're going to. And uh, to everybody watching, thank you so much. Joe and Sam Kelly, thank you. Cliff Swain, thank you for joining. Holly Scott, thanks for jumping on. And uh, we will see you next week, hopefully back at our regular time, unless Ellie or I or Scotty Mack has something to do. We will see you next Sunday for episode 31, 8 p.m. Eastern. Ellie, by the way, you owe me lunch. Tom Brady in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Mad call on my part, huh? <laughs> Thank you again. We are racquetball indoor and outdoor in New Jersey, private courts, public courts, whatever it is, do what you can. Let's keep going. Let's be doers. Let's not talk a lot. All right. Let's get shit done. And, uh, oh, by the way, I'll tell you who I'm playing mixed doubles with in Colorado, maybe next week. Have a great night. See everybody soon.